So, Casper, uh, great that you uh, invited us over here at the uh, Estonia show show showroom in, in Tallinn. Yes, nice to have you here. Yeah, thank you. And so you're responsible for the uh, e-residence uh, yes, project? Yes, I'm so director of this uh, program e-residency. So for people who don't know it, uh, what is it? <laughs> it's an uh, it's, uh, Estonian governmental startup program um, to give uh, every person in, um, on planet the digital identity. So everybody could have um, the same access to digital systems like Estonians do with this card and uh, and see what else comes out of it. We don't know yet, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> in short. <laughs> and where does the idea come from? The idea actually came quite long time ago. Just the idea, main idea is that uh, because of some foreigners who run Estonian companies, they need to physically sign all the papers. But that's nonsense because Estonians have been digitally signing things for 15 years already. So the idea was let's give these uh, cards to everybody who wants them. But then, one year ago, 1st of September last year, uh, CIO of Estonia, Tavi Kotka, uh, published an idea of 10 million e-Estonians. So let's have uh, 10 million of them in Estonia. And that got like huge buzz on internet uh, inside Estonia, like uh, why 10 million? We don't want anyone here, uh, what's this all about? And uh, the idea was that let's think bigger as a government. Uh, let's not just roll out another identity card, but let's take this as a business case, as a startup case, to see can we offer any value to international people through this e-residency, so that actually both parties would win. Because the, 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 the normal people who are living over here in, in, in Estonia, they, they have this card already for years and also yeah. access to the, to, the, to the services. Yes, yes, in Estonia. I personally have never voted using this photo, voting booth. I always voting through digital centers. I, I don't know how to like sign things on paper. I don't know what to do with my hand because it's, it's nonsense for me. Uh, I declare taxes online. I get my e-prescriptions through this card. So everything is through this card for Estonians for the last 15 years. So, and now we just open these gates to everybody who desires it. And how does it come? Because uh, I'm from the Netherlands yeah. and we're talking about uh, uh, digital and governments. Uh, they're not really working very really well together <laughs> because every project that, uh, in IT, the government does, it costs 10 times more than they planned and it doesn't work. So, yeah. how, how do you manage to, to, get, to, to get it work? Well, because it's I would say that I'm too young to actually remember, but uh, because Estonia didn't have too many resources when it got independent after the collapse of the Soviet Union, so it had to be very efficient. It didn't have opportunity to put different data centers to different locations so that every like public sector or service provider would have their own data. It had to make a plan, which is now called X-Road, so that all the different databases can communicate with each other. Everybody can have digital identity so that uh, everybody can use the same services using their digital identity cards. Uh, and no data is multiplied on internet. So if you want to access, for example, declare taxes, then the tax office needs to ask that data from banks, from a social tax, from different agencies, using your digital code. This makes the country efficient enough and uh, to serve all its customers, i.e. citizens, throughout Estonia, don't need physical offices anywhere, and uh, to avoid duplication of data on the internet. And it's also because uh, it's, it's a relatively small country, so it would, it would be really expensive when you uh, would add, uh, offer all the services to your uh, uh, customers. Yeah, um, exactly. Because uh, if 40% if of Estonians live in the capital and then you need for other like part of Estonia, you need physical offices everywhere because it's it's still 45,000 square kilometers. To Estonia, you just don't have money. <laughs> you just don't have money. You need to give make this as a public right for every person to get access to all the services. And uh, once every person has digital identity, then came to play the private sector because our personal codes is not private information, all the public sector and private sector agencies and, uh, and um, companies can use the same service. So then telecoms entered the game, then banking entered the game, and now we have hundreds of startups are offering services for Estonian citizens. Yeah, but the framework was set up by the government. Yes, the yeah. framework, how we uh, let people in and how we issue the cards was set by government and especially also the regulations were set by government. Yeah. 
and 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 and, and also maybe there uh, because you can make a fresh start. I think that's also really really that's helps. That's very good point because if you have built those systems and services for last 20 years then to scratch everything and to start from zero it's you know it's very difficult and sometimes it, we may say it's impossible so if you don't have anything any legacy systems and you can just start from fresh then uh, this transparent and uh, system at Estonia has makes sense you know, right? And, and, and uh, what can people uh, uh, that, that are uh, e-residents uh, uh, do? So what benefits does it mm. have for them, yeah. but also for, for, for your country? Yeah, so it's a good question. So when we launched this project, uh, we are still in beta phase. So we are discovering the benefits and use cases uh, from day one till now. So we don't end this journey. But already today, we actually see and we have real use cases, how it's used and what for it's used. And the real business case is here actually um, not for EU citizens, but are actually for non-EU citizens uh, from the developing world. Uh, people who want to do business. Be they are freelancers, entrepreneurs, usually age 25 to 35, who want to do business on the internet, who want to sell their services or products to international crowd. Today the problem is that no one trusts them on the internet to do because no one trusts their countries or their companies they don't have access to digital services like payment provider they, they can't sell their services in no one can pay for the service and there is a huge hassle to for the bureaucracy and the paperwork what you need to do and apply in your own country so they apply for e-residency they open up companies they open up bank account they get payment provider and digital signature and that is a full package for them to run location independent business fully on cloud yeah, so, so it really lowers the threshold for people in countries where the infrastructure is not ready yet for this kind of businesses yes. to, to start. And it also enables now international companies to serve their services to international customers. For example, at the moment, if you're a payment provider, let's say PayPal, Stripe, whoever, you need to enter each specific country to do know your customers, to meet with the regulations and all that. And it takes huge efforts on each country to actually meet those requirements. Now you can integrate e-residency as a platform to your own website and offer services to e-residency through Estonian e-residency platform so that basically you can scale your services from day one internationally. And, and what is this for you as a country? <laughs> That's a very good question. Uh, we are also still discovering that but what we do know is that this is not, we don't build another tax heaven. We don't want to go that direction as some countries have, uh, which is a short-term direction to start collecting uh, taxes on those companies which business activities are not in Estonia. So if you're from Ukraine, you're doing selling your stuff there through Estonia entity, you still pay taxes to Ukraine. So and the question then is how Estonia earns out of this. The direct answer is of course that uh, Estonia earns through the private sector who offers services to e-residents. So e-residents want bank accounts, they want legal advice, they want tax advice, they like physical address providers. And as an e-resident you pay for those services to Estonian country, uh, private sector of companies, and that's how Estonia receives new money. So this is like the direct kind of new investment what Estonia receives. But the more of course, this is what we see is that if Estonia has friends internationally, business connections internationally, then like in startups, sometimes it's more important the customer base and later to see what's the value is great and the income uh, they come later. Yeah, and, 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 and it's also a way and, and also what you're doing over here with the whole Estonia center is, is, is just uh, building also your, your reputation because it's exactly. quite hard as, as a small country to build reputations about Estonia. Yeah. Where was it? Yeah, and, exactly. and, and this is really a, a, a unique uh, story. That's true because yeah, uh, when we consider where Estonia has now in recent year been published in ABC, BBC, CNN, The Economist, you name it, any journal, any newspaper, then basically this is kind of free positive media and definitely very useful and it's very difficult to track how much more investments Estonia has received after that. But the level of trust about Estonia to Estonia is definitely has been increased. And how do you, because uh, when you came up uh, with, the, uh, with the idea and the project, uh, uh, you build it and then you build something unique, so it's, it's quite uh, easy to get uh, attention from the media, from the, the big names yeah. you just mentioned. And what way do you manage to, to keep this attention going? Because yeah. 
uh, after a couple of months or years, the, the new thing is, is, is gone, and then you really have, have to prove yourself. So at, yeah. at what way are you going to, yeah. to prove yourself to the world? Yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, first of all, one thing uh, why the tension has been there is that uh, we as a government are starting like, as a startup, as acting like a startup, sorry, that as we don't know everything before what we do, we do it together with customers, we launch alpha, then we launch beta, and then we launch our MEP, our minimum viable product, and then we launch the real product. So if we are going to take it step by step, then first of all, this is very interesting as government acting like this. And second of all, we do have things to show. As Estonia is a small country and our government is supporting that pro program, then we can actually be very agile and we can move fast in sense and fail fast sometimes if you are mistaken and admitting those mistakes and taking the next step again. So we do have to show milestones in every two months time. For example, 1st of January, 1st of December we launched the project as Alpha. 1st of January we had mandate to form the team. Uh, 1st of April we had a team of seven members running this project. 1st of May we had international launch of uh, the web page where you can apply online. End of May we opened 38 foreign embassies where you can pick up your card. Meet July the cabinet accepted the new regulations that needs to su be supporting e-residents in mm -hmm. their journey. For example, opening bank accounts online. So we do have those huge milestones because the government supporting because we're agile and because the infrastructure is there to just to build up new services. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the first time I I, I hear something uh, somebody uh, of a government say MVP and agile. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's crazy, and I think uh, so. And what a way uh, uh, um, are you uh, commu uh, communicating with the government? So, uh, at what way do you also manage to get this speed also uh, well at the same time also working together and also with, uh, showing some responsibility uh, to the government? So, how, how do you do it? Well, definitely this is a challenge for us, uh, for us also because there are not many of those projects which really take into consideration all of the public sector like ministries, Minister of Finance, Minister of Justice, Minister of Internal Affairs, External Affairs, Minister of Economics. So they're all in part of this and now they need to start thinking as an end user perspective that I'm not offering some solution in silos, that I'm considering the end user as an e-resident and combined we offer a service for them. And this is a great challenge but what has been the real secret source? Um, there are, I guess there is no one reason, there are many. One of them is definitely the external media attention has given the positive vibe that we should act now. Second of all, we have a board of e-residency board who consists of different uh, ministries. So basically on every monthly basis we have update and they are responsible on their ministers that this work should be done. So basically it's the way how we are structured helps us to succeed there. Um, what else has been helpful? Of course, we are good as a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because of, about your team, uh, how many people are working on this project? We are a seven, seven persons team, but uh, definitely rather we increase our team size uh, soon. And we are going to concentrate more on partnerships and, uh, and new companies, uh, startups especially. For example, in uh, mid September, 12th to uh, 14th of September, we are organizing first government hackathon. So in our island called Swarmsea, there is a 48 hour hackathon uh, organized by Courage 48, where people come together uh, and find and define new euros and say ideas and actually make those happen, actually programming, designing and make those new services happen. This is the first event. After that, I can't speak loudly, but we are going to scale internationally from different countries to organize those hackathons, accelerators, etc. So our idea is that public and private sector internationally would take this idea and start implementing new ideas and integrate that to existing companies. Yeah, so the thing you're doing, you're not, you're not saying, okay, I'm going to do it all by myself or, or, with, or with my team, but we're facilitating others. Are we going to, to, to launch uh, Estonia as a platform, empowering other people exactly. to create? Because as a government as is the team of seven we can't do much we can just make the process very easy make it secure make it uh, efficient for private sector to use it and uh, tell and tell the use cases and best scenarios how you can use it because basically e is a platform as a student government is just one service provider who offers you to build companies offers perhaps digital signatures but you can 
think whatever services which needs very high identities, high level identities, which we, you really need to know that the other person is the one who he or she claims to be on internet, whether it's shared economy or alternative finance market. So all of these industries actually can facilitate e residential platform on their own services. Yeah, so people are not using Facebook as their digital <laughs> passport, but the, uh, exactly. the card. Yeah, and it's sometimes it's not enough to just make a photograph of your friend's passport and start using the service. No? So. <laughs> <laughs> and you also got a, 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 a card reader with a card, so, so everywhere you are in the world you can uh, identify yourself. Yes, you get card reader, pin codes and cards. So to pin one to authenticate and pin two to digital, digital design. Having said that, of course, the card reader is not too mobile friendly. So as Estonians are using mobile ID already for last 10 years or so, uh, we are going to launch also mobile, more mobile friendly solutions, how to authenticate themselves. But that takes uh, step by step, of course. Uh, yes. And how do you manage? Because I think we're, uh, uh, when we will start a brainstorm right now, we will have about uh, 1,000 ideas in an hour about what you do with uh, with <laughs> and So at, at, at what way uh, do you keep your focus? Because the mm. possibilities, are, they are endless. Uh, yeah. Especially, uh, I'm also doing quite some stuff in the sharing economy and, and, and your digital identity is, is one of the biggest issues that will come up the, the, uh, the, the, the next years. Uh, when people mm. are going to work together and doing business together uh, in different countries yeah. without knowing uh, the, uh, the only thing they know about uh, each other is, is, is their Facebook page. So, in what way did you, the, do you keep the focus in, in, in doing the right things? Yeah, it's a challenge, definitely. Um, so far, how I've done it is that um, we are very close to really residents and we really talk to them, <laughs> ask what they do and what they want to do. And this minimum viable product, what we have put together of company, bank account, payment provider and digital signature, we see that this covers 80% of the pains of uh, entrepreneur or freelancer internationally. And everything else is like an extra add-on, which we as a team cannot focus, but can just help and facilitate and give the APIs so that others would understand it. But how do we do it? We just keep our MVP very narrow uh, and uh, make a list of things what still needs to be done in order to get that MVP and then just push those things, like those five things, very hardly in our public sector to make those done. And once they are done, then we take next thing. So we do try to keep the scope very, very limited. And uh, we're talking about the name, um, I was thinking because I also got a, a, a background in, 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 in branding. Um, in the end, was it really necessary to call it e-Estonia? Because I can also imagine maybe one of the one of the problems in, in growing internationally is that it's 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 uh, uh, linked to a country, and maybe people uh, are, who are proud at their own country say, yes. okay, but I really see the value. But I'm from France. Let's just just give a random yeah. example. Yeah, that's that's definitely yeah uh, can be a challenge. Um, EU residency or Estonian residency or even the branding and how it's Estonian logos here. So I don't have exact plan of what it will be named or the branding will be in next coming years. But definitely what we see is that if anyone is uh, familiar with the directive, EU directive called EIDAS, which means that after two years, every EU member states needs to start accepting other member states digital signatures and authentication method which means that every Estonian e-resident is also every other EU country e-resident and that all already makes Estonian e-residency term not necessary anymore because you're EU e-residency kind of and uh, definitely this is uh, what to consider and especially perhaps we don't need to do much perhaps we need to redesign the uh, cards make it as an EU card and change the name as EU reason so very valid point. Okay, and, and you said in, in, in the beginning of the interview, uh, uh, the first goal was to have 10 million e residents. So, yes. where are you right now? Uh, the goal of 10 million e residents were uh, was proposed by 2025. Um, so we've got some time left. We have some time left. Uh, but at the moment, uh, we are taking goals uh, on yearly basis. This year, goal was just to launch it and uh, get 2,000 e residents. We passed that uh, on May, <laughs> and then we put 5,000 e-residents, and we are passing that on end of August. So we are like passing those goals very quickly because the interest is much higher. 
but of course there's long run to 10 million and perhaps two points to take here is one is that the goal itself of 10 million is not as important uh, for Estonia because Estonia has 30,000 active companies if Estonia receives 10 more thousand active companies it's one third of our economy <laughs> so it's already huge and we have already 20,000 people in our subscription list to desire this so then 10 million itself is not so huge goal for Estonia and the EU to be more successful but having said that I can't see any reason why it should stop at 10 million you know if there are like payment providers a shared economy, alternative finance, all those markets now which need to get higher trust level on internet, like everybody needs to have that, then there is no reason it should stop at 10 million instead of 2 billion or something, because everybody eventually need to prove who they are if they want to some consume some sort of services. And but if it's not e resident it's someone else's e resident who gives you that national identity. Yeah. Yeah, cool. So I wish you good luck uh, with uh, <laughs> the next years and I'm looking forward to where it's going because I think it's really exciting and uh, thanks for your interview. Thank you very much.